everybody. Hey, this is a two-part Photoshop CC 2018 series where I'm going to show you first how to use an adjustment layer to recolor parts of a photo. So for instance, in interior design, we like to change paint colors to see what a room looks like. So I'm going to show you how to do that. In the second video, I'm going to teach you how to use a layer mask to put transparent backgrounds onto objects like furniture so that we can place that furniture into the room without those annoying white backgrounds surrounding them. So let's get started with the first video. What I want to do is I want to open up the room and show you how to change the color of the paint on the walls. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to go to Open, and I'm going to find that JPEG, that actual photo that I want to work with. So I'm going to click on that photo and click Open. So it's pretty cool in Photoshop we can work directly on JPEGs or photo files. We don't have to create a canvas and then place the photo right into it. The first thing I need to do is come down to the layers panel where it says background and you see a picture of the room itself. Graphic designers always right click on background, select duplicate layer, and I'm going to keep it named as background copy uh, when this little window pops up and click OK. Graphic designers like to keep the integrity of the original photo and so they make copies of them so that they can make any adjustments necessary to a copy but still keeping the original photo intact in case they want to go back and look at it. It's kind of a reference type of issue. So I'm going to go ahead and click the eyeball on the original background and what that does is it hides it we still see the background copy that's right here on my screen and this is what we're going to use to uh, kind of change the paint color because that brown is something else in there, right? Wow. So let's, uh, let's make some changes to this room. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on this back wall to show you how to make changes and it's up to you. You can decide later maybe you want to change the walls or even the floor or even the ceiling. I mean Hey, let's be honest, you can change the color of pretty much anything using the technique I'm about to show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in using the magnifying glass and I'm going to click and drag down and what that does is it kind of brings everything uh, a little closer. I have old eyes as I tell my students, so I like to try to work a little bit close as I can. Adjust my screen. My goal is to try and get all four corners to show up on the screen as large as possible. There we go, something like that will work for right now. In order to change this paint color in Photoshop, I need to select it first. The easiest way to do this is to use the pen tool. It's located right above the text tool in the uh, toolbar on the left. So it's this little guy right here. You can also type P for pen and that will activate the command as well. So what I want to do is I want to trace the outside of this wall um, using the pen tool. So I'm simply going to start in a corner and click. And I'm not holding, I'm just kind of moving my mouse down and I'm clicking a second time to draw a line. And I continue to do that as I come through and I'm just going to get the corners. I'm not including the baseboard in, at this time because I kind of like the color of that one. And the goal is to try and get all the corners as snugly as you can. And just to demonstrate, I'm going to come down just a little bit lower right here. And then the other goal is to make sure that you always do a closed shape. So when I come back to the original point that I drew, do you see that little circle that kind of uh, appears at the pen tool? That indicates if I click now with that circle, I'm going to close the shape, which is exactly what I want. But for right now, it's just showing me the outline. So again, what we want to do is we want to make sure that all of our corners are very snugly placed where we want them to. There's nothing worse than having a painter come in and miss the corners. You know what I'm saying? Like, done a sloppy job. We're interior designers. We don't do sloppy jobs. So to fix something like this, I'm going to take the magnifying glass and I'm really going to zoom in so that I can see where I'm working. And there's the black arrow which is located right underneath the text tool, but if I hold my mouse down, there's a white arrow. So the difference between the black arrow and the white arrow is the black arrow will move this entire outline that I drew 
uh, in proportion and it'll move the entire thing. The white arrow allows me to click first on the grip to activate that grip and then I can kind of move that grip um, without moving the entire outline itself. So I'm going to make sure that I place that as snugly in there as I can. Let's try about right there. So before I go any further, I'm going to make sure that all my corners are that way. And if I need to zoom in a little bit to really see, I'm going to do that. So definitely you do the same thing too. If you need to get it a little bit more snug, make sure you do that. And I'm just using the scroll bars on the side of my panel to kind of help me move. Sometimes it's easier to place it first and then adjust it. Gosh, my painter would have been really sloppy. Look at this. Come all the way over here. Just use the scroll bars to kind of help you maneuver your way through. And again, it's, it's sometimes easier to click on the grip that you want to start working with and then adjust it. Oh, yep, missed it a little bit right here, too. Gosh, there we go. Now I have it pretty gosh darn perfect. So I'm going to do Control minus to zoom out so that I can actually see the wall. And I'm actually going to use the magnifying glass again to kind of make this a little bit larger. There we go. So this is right where you need to be in order to move on to the next step. The next step, I'm going to select the black arrow just because that's how I work is to right click, go to make selection. This little window will pop up and as long as it says that the feather radius is 0 0.5 pixels, I'm going to click OK. And what you see is we do get those marching ants and that indicates that we've selected this area of the photo. Now it's time to add the adjustment layer and you can do that two ways. Down here at the bottom right in your layers panel there is a little um, Oreo cookie, that's what I like to call it. It's a circle um, that's half filled. You can come in here and what I'm going to choose is hue saturation. You will notice that the panel changed over here on the right hand side, but you'll also notice that we have something new in the layers panel that shows a hue saturation. This is your adjustment layer. So let me explain this a little bit for you. The Oreo cookie indicates that this is an adjustment layer and what that means is we're adjusting parts of this photo to do what we want it to do. And so here you see this black and white little box right here. The white area shows the shape that we just traced and it's in white and the rest of the photo is black. So what's ever in the white is what's going to change. Whatever is in the black is what is going to stay the same. I know that sounds really strange right now but just work with me. I'm going to kind of explain this as we go. we would made a hue and saturation adjustment layer so that means that we get to change colors and up here at the very top you see that like there's this little properties panel that kind of showed up. What I can do is I can take this uh, hue and I can slide it and you'll see how we can actually make different colors appear on that wall. But what's kind of strange about this is that um, like right here I have it in the green but my wall is red. What the heck? To fix that, all I have to do is click on this little area called Colorize. There's a little box. If I put a check in there, you will notice that it actually adjusted where the little arrow was here on the scroll bar. And now when I go to the green, you see that it actually does do green. The saturation allows you to choose the brightness. Whoa, that's a bright one or you can mute the color down to be a little bit more realistic. Um, so there's a nice like hunter green right there. You can also choose um, how light you want it to be or how dark. So adding black or white to the paint essentially is kind of what you can kind of think of that as. So that is how you can change the paint color of a wall in a photo. Now if for some reason that I click off of that. All I have to do is click right back on the layer and this will pop up and I can still adjust it. The reason I like to use adjustment layers is because it does allow me to 
change the color easily with just clicking on the layer and then coming up and adjust it. There are other ways to do it where you actually create a fill color, but it's not as easy to adjust the color. So this is the easiest way to go about it. Now I said that this was one way to go about it. You can always come up here to layer and do new adjustment layer and then hue saturation. But I kind of like working with this because it just lays out all the options that I have for adjustment layers very easily. I can get to them very quickly. All right, so we have a new paint color on the wall and you can choose whatever color that you want to continue on in this demonstration. But, you know, it colored this window and I really don't want it to color this window. So what I have to do is I have to tell this adjustment layer, hey, I need to cut this part out and what will happen is that you'll see a little black square will happen here which indicates, hey, I'm not adjusting anything in that area. So let me show you how this works. It's the same way that we did the original adjustment layer. I'm going to start the pen tool. This time I'm going to type P for pen. So you see my cursor change to the pen tool. I'm going to come in a little closer this time and try to do this right. Pen tool. And I'm going to go over the frame. And I'm really going to try and concentrate on going around it as much as possible. There's a lot of little lines on this one. And I'm just going to use the scroll bars. You can also use the pan tool if you want to. I just kind of happen to like using the scroll bars a little bit. Try to get it as close as possible. It can be a little bit tricky, so if you feel like you need to adjust even more, you can. Try to get right on those corners. And I'm going to come all the way back to the beginning. I'm going to make sure I have a circle next to my pen tool that indicates a closed shape. I need to turn this into the marching ants, so I right click and choose make selection. I'm going to click OK on this little window that popped up. And now I have the marching ants. Now last time what we did is we created an adjustment layer, but we already have one created. So this time, and this is a little strange, we need to tell Photoshop that we need to fill this area with black. And before I do that, I'm actually going to click on the black and white square, and you'll see that it kind of has this little white dash box around it that indicates that I'm actually working with the black and white feature of this adjustment layer. So with that selected, I'm going to go all the way up to the top menu, choose Edit, and choose Fill. This little window pops up, so make sure that your contents are black, that your mode is normal, and that your opacity is at 100%, which means that there's no transparency happening. Click OK and you will see that the picture actually turned back to the normal color that it was before and when we come back over here to this little black and white square you can now see where that window is outlined in black it kind of created a little box inside the white box right so again that's Photoshop's way of hiding certain features and showing others it's really hard to explain um, but you just have to know that anytime that you see black you are not hiding or changing anything and anytime you see white that is where the adjustment is being made. Remember too, if for some reason you actually did fill that square with black, it probably means that you did not click on this little adjustment box here in the adjustment layer to change um, the fact that we are working with the adjustment instead of the actual colors itself. So always when you go to do this, click this first, then go to edit, and fill with black. I'm going to use control minus to zoom out a little bit so I can kind of see what it's looking like. That's beautiful. Oh, I did forget a little outlet here, so you always have to be very mindful of what you're doing to get rid of the marching ants. Uh, control D. And then it's the same thing. We're going to come in here to this outlet. I'm going to zoom in on it so I can see it. I don't necessarily want to see the pixels, so I take it right out. So see how I went a little too far and you can see the grid and all the pixels. That kind of confuses me sometimes. So I try to get it 
to a point right before it goes into pixel mode. And pen tool. Click around this outlet. Close the shape. Right click. Make selection. OK. Now we have the marching ants in place. I'm going to make sure that the adjustment box is selected and I know because it's got that white dashed line around it. Edit. Fill. OK. And there it goes back to the normal color. Now if I want to readjust the color again, I can actually click on the cookie itself and it will bring me back into mode so that maybe maybe I want it to be a little bit more of a purple wall and maybe I want to dull that saturation so it's kind of muted out a little bit graying it out beautiful there it is control D to unselect that little outlet and uh, I have a beautifully new colored wall